Yes, hi everyone, this is David again, and welcome to another of my instrument videos. Um, in this video, I will be talking about the instruments, um, the so called six pack. Now, um, for those of you who have already seen the other video about this topic, um, I have explained the airspeed indicator, altimeter, and VSI also known as the uh, pedostatic instrument in another video so if you see this one first there's another video where I'm explicit, uh, exclusively explaining these three instruments that belong to the pedostatic system um, this video though will be about um, the other three instruments that belong to the gyroscopic uh, system or vacuum system those are the attitude indicator which we have right here the um, direction indicator or heading indicator which we have right here as well as the turn coordinator now one thing up front um, the turn coordinator um, works on the same principle basically as these two do um, but as we see here DC elec electric okay this one is electrically driven and um, the reason being is um, if our vacuum pump should fail okay uh, we would still have an electrical backup as far as um, uh, turns and, and things and core and, and rudder indication and, and so on okay um, also at the end of this video I will shortly uh, talk about these two navigational instruments um, yeah so let's start with um, the attitude indicator uh, what do we have here we have the scale here okay this is basically the outer edge that you can see right here um, is one piece and behind that one in real life there's another little thin piece of metal okay that's attached to gimbals and these gimbals are again attached um, to the rest of the instruments within the case uh, what do we have we have um, it's div oh, let's say that little uh, plate here is divided into um, two half circles okay so we have a blue part which represents the horizon okay and we have a brown part representing the crown of course um, furthermore we have um, these two uh, one or this is like this is zero basically here we have our uh, white and yellow or red index it's a reddish or, or uh, orange index and then we have uh, one two three four five um, lines here in white each of those represent 10 degrees okay so basically 10 degrees of roll if we turn to the left or turn the airplane to the right um, the index will move accordingly okay so each of these representing 10 degrees so we have 10 30 uh, sorry 10 20 30 40 is not indicated what we have indicated right here is um, 45 and here we have 90 degrees okay the same thing on the other side 90 degrees they do become uh, relevant and important when you do your um, private course uh, while doing maneuvers such as deep turns and so on but of course also for normal turns so um, now where you where we talked about these um, we also have the same information for pitch attitude those are the black lines right here that are parallel to each other so we have uh, 5, 10, 15 and 20 degrees okay each of them uh, represents 5 degrees of pitch change the same goes um, to the, towards the brown uh, shading here okay um, and the same thing right here uh, then we have our miniature airplane okay or orange bar this one is um, adjustable with this black knob here okay so whenever you have uh, started the plane okay um, on the ramp um, you will hear that and we will find out that this thing will erect itself okay whenever it's whenever the driver behind it is spinning fast enough and then you just should make sure that these orange or reddish bars are aligned with the white um, line here dividing the two half circles okay so um, yeah, that you you just make sure that you have them aligned so that you can go on a proper flight and have it and have a proper reference point here. Again, this is the um, orange index, and this one, of course, this outer edge here, uh, outer circle is not rotating. This is the piece that's changing. Um, that's pretty much it about the attitude indicator. Again, it's a vacuum-driven instrument. 
um, a gyroscopic instrument. Okay, it works on the principle uh, of uh, how gyros work. And um, let's come to the next one, also a gyro instrument. This is our heading indicator. Um, not too much to say, it's a very simple instrument basically. We have, um, as you can see, 30 degree increments um, that are um, marked with a digit. Okay, so this uh, three rep uh, basically represents 030, 060, E for East or 090 and so on. Okay, so it's in 30 degree um, increments where we have the numbers and all in between is either 5 for the short uh, white lines and 10 degrees of course uh, for the longer ones. Um, what else do we have? Well we have our airplane and the index right here which of course makes sense if you turn this scale will turn accordingly depending on your direction. Then you have a uh, orange or reddish index right here. This one is movable um, with this heading knob right here. Okay so let's say you are in a straight level flight and um, you, the tower tells you or approach whoever tells you to uh, fly a certain heading you can use this knob and um, this one will basically turn uh, let me sh uh, show you that really quick okay so you can basically go ahead uh, for example if he says turn right heading or we on a we are on 070 currently he tells you turn uh, left heading 030 so if you have a lot to write down or a lot to copy from a clearance you can go ahead and um, move it to 030 or whatever he told you to turn to so that you don't forget what heading you were instructed to fly at or to turn to. Okay, um, that's pretty much it about that. Um, one thing before I forget there is this thing here. So um, for instrument flight you should always make sure that your heading is set correctly with the magnetic compass. Um, Okay, because it, it does tend to tumble at times or um, just make sure that you are properly aligned with the magnetic compass as it sometimes is like has a little bit um, or a few mistakes that can run um, that are just uh, not inherent but um, they tend to um, arise from time to time. So it's a good rule to check every um, 15 minutes more or plus minus a few minutes maybe. Um, double check your heading indicator with the magnetic compass. So what you do, let's say um, we would be on a heading of 060 instead of east, uh, instead of 070. What you do, um, we just go ahead and push that knob and then um, you will be able to turn this scale. Let me see if I can do this. Oh yeah, I can actually do this, okay. So plus or minus, okay, so that will rotate the scale. Okay, just don't go ahead and um, confuse this one with this one, okay, because that's what you probably want to do or don't want to do. It's the least thing. Okay, so um, since we have discussed this one, uh, we'll already go to the last one. This is our turn coordinator. Again, as I already mentioned at the beginning of this video, uh, these two. Um, or again, all three of um, are gyro-driven instruments. These two are driven by a vacuum pump that sucks in air and speeds up the gyros. Okay, and this one is the only one where the gyro within the instrument case is electrically driven. Um, again, that's just um, a safety um, a safety um, concern here because if if your vacuum pump should fail, you will still have a backup. Okay. Um, that's also again that's why it says DC direct current electric okay it's driven um, electrically um, what does it do here we have the plane and we have these two markings okay this of course as you can see with the attitude indicator uh, we are we would be in strain level flight same indication on the ground so if we either roll into a left or right turn these will uh, let's say we turn into a right turn Okay, this wing will move to the right, and if you do your instrument flight training, um, this one becomes impor uh, very important, the lower one here, because it will represent um, um, a standard rate turn, which again is 3 degrees per second. Okay, so what you can basically do if you uh, make a right turn, a standard rate, and you have this wing here aligned with this marking, you can double check with your attitude indicator and see. 
um, how many degrees of rho or bank this would represent on the attitude indicator. Okay, same thing on the other side. Uh, turn right, turn to the left. You would have to align this wing with this marking right here. Okay. Uh, what do we have down here? This is the inclinometer, um, which is the name um, this tube has, and there's a little black ball in it with a flute that's within, that's going back and forth within the flute. This one basically represents um, your rudder movement or your vertical um, vertical stabilizer in the back, the tail, how it's moving either left or right. Um, that's where you, uh, that's where the, the expression skipping or uh, skidding or slipping comes from. Okay, let's say you make a turn to the left and the ball moves to the right. Uh, that basically means that your tail, okay, is outside of the direction where you turn to. Okay, it's going this way. Okay, it's like you're driving a car um, in a curve and your the back of the car is just, I don't know, sort of sliding out of it. That means there's too much force, too much power behind it, so it can take it. So the tail will move out. Okay, you also call that an uncoordinated turn. The same would be in the up, um, opposite direction. Uh, for example, if you have, if you're in a right turn, okay, this well, again, this wing would be uh, aligned with this mark here, and the ball would go to the left. Um, your tail would be to the left, which means you are you you are supposed to apply left rudder. Okay, our goal is always to fly. Um, coordinated, which means keep the ball in the middle as best as you can. Um, if the ball goes to the um, to the to the inside of the turn, it means you are slipping. Okay, you're sort of like falling into the into the turn, whatever direction you turn to. Okay. Um, then we have the um, the mark here, two minutes. Okay, and also no pitch information. Again, this all only shows you. Um, rate and turn indications there's no pitch so no nose up or nose down movements at all the two minutes means um, it's related or comes from the um, three degrees per second um, standard rate turn thing that means if you turn three degrees per second um, it will take you two minutes to complete a 360 degree turn um, one minute, of course, half of that for a 180 degree turn if you keep the standard rate turn at all times. Uh, yes, that's pretty much it uh, for the turn coordinator. Again, no uh, bank information only, and I will show you where your tail is going in the turn. Also, doing straight and level flight uh, does not give you any pitch information. This one is the only one, uh, one of the only ones that shows you uh, pitch and bank. Um, okay, so this is pretty much, there's pretty much everything is said about this instrument. Um, so I, earlier I said I want to go into these two instruments here really quick. Um, very simple. This is, um, it says your OBS Omni Bearing Selector. Um, this is your center, uh, sorry not center, course deviation indicator. And this one is with NAV1, depending on how your airplane is equipped. This one is with, uh, with NAV2. So this one can be used with VORs as well as ILSs. Okay, ILSs because it has a, a horizontal needle showing you your glide slope. This one only has a vertical needle, so it can only show you um, off course indications if you're flying towards a VOR or away from it. Um, again, this one is with the NAV1 in a Cessna 172 a Skyhawk, and this one is with NAV. Two. Again, this one is only for horizontal navigation or guidance and azimuth, and this one is for uh, horizontal and vertical guidance, whereby the vert vertical would only be used for ILS approaches. Um, again, this knob is there, it says OBS, Omni Bearing Selector. If we turn this around, it will turn the scale. Okay, it will not change the needle, it will just turn the scale around. Okay, so um, we'll already come to the end of this video. Um, again, the other video is about the pedostatic instruments that you will also find on my channel. I hope it was a bit helpful. Thanks for watching and uh, see you later. Bye bye.